Hi everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome to a different video today. Um, very rarely um, do we, on any of these kind of audio, audiology channels, um, EA channels like Dr. Zhao or myself or um, Reese or Neil, we very rarely talk about irrigation, um, which is basically where you're sort of, you know, flushing the ear out with any kind of liquid, in most cases water, um, although some people add things to it like hydrogen peroxide into the solution, but in this case I'm just going to use water. We very rarely talk about it, but in this particular case you can see there's lots of wax very deep in the ear canal embedded with hair, so it's a quite difficult case. But at certain times during this procedure the patient would not stay still. Now he had, there are various medical reasons for that, but he would at certain times fidget uncontrollably. So if you ever see the camera kind of move around and shake like a little sort of earthquake, um, and that's a sign that the patient is fidgeting and um, so sort of right there he was getting a little bit jittery um, which makes microsuction a bit dangerous you know, particularly if you're trying to do work near the eardrum it is certainly not a place you want to be if the patient's moving around all the time they have to be able to sit still so um, I'm deferring to irrigation here for a short period so this is nothing high-tech it's just basically like a squirty bottle that I'm shoving in his ear with wa water in it um, the, the actual sort of blue silicone tip that's kind of lodged in the ear canal, uh, what that does is it actually shoots the water out in three directions towards the actual ear canal. So you're shooting water at the walls of the ear canal and it's not going directly down and kind of smacking against the eardrum, which would be a complete disaster. So this just makes the irrigation a lot safer. Um, so obviously whenever we talk about irrigation or syringing, um, we tend to have negative connotations with that, particularly um, if a patient has had their ear syringe sort of with the old-fashioned kind of big metal syringes with a huge plunger, which is definitely dangerous. Um, but that's fallen well out of favour now in the UK. Very, I mean, it's almost unheard of that you'd have a, a patient being syringed with a big old-fashioned metal thing. You would normally see patients being uh, having their ear irrigated with a kind of manual method like this, which is low pressure, or an electronic irrigator which is like a little machine with sort of a, a gun on the end of it, um, which kind of pulses water into the ear. Um, so in this case, I decided to use a manual irrigator. And you can see here the ear is looking significantly cleaner. So it's kind of cleared away all the slime um, that was on the left-hand side. And now we've got um, the remaining kind of ultra sticky adhered wax deeper in the, um, the ear canal. So. For safety reasons, I decided to go with irrigation, but we also have the added benefit that the water will hopefully uh, loosen up some of this wax and dead skin and, and just make it a little bit softer, give me a little bit more position to try and remove it. So we won't be able to get all of it because, I mean, it really is very deeply encrusted into the recess um, just before the eardrum. But we will be able to achieve enough of a clean such that it will restore the patient's hearing. So we're going in again, and I'm, I'm being extremely careful. Now, the, at this point, the patient is able to actually sit still without fidgeting. Um, but I can tell you, he is, you know, there is more fidgeting to come, so I will have to irrigate one more time. But um, it, it has actually softened some of the wax, which is to be expected. I mean, water, um, water is a ceruminolytic, so it basically... Um, that's just a fancy term, which means that it's, it's a solution which can kind of break down and dissolve earwax. So cerumen is earwax and lytic. Um, if you ever see lytic or lysis in a word, it usually means to kind of break down or separate. Um, and uh, so in this case, earwax separate or earwax disintegrate or dissolve. That's basically what ceruminolytic means. Um, so in a similar way to sodium bicarb as a ceruminolytic, um, anything with hydrogen peroxide in it. <clears throat> so, the, and the idea is that the water, will, the actual water solution will actually go in and hydrate the keratin. So it will hydrate all the dead skin cells and then they'll kind of break off and flake apart. Um, so even with a very short exposure, it, it's made a difference already. So we've got more of the eardrum clean here. Um, and again, we've just got some dead skin lying the ear canal. But again, it's not quite as exposed as I'd like. So it's the gray skin in the background there and it's kind of pinkish around the handle of the malleus. So that is the eardrum back there. And again, it's kind of caked. So I rather suspect that this patient has probably used either sodium bicarb or hydrogen peroxide, used it for a short amount of time. The, the earwax has kind of 
liquefied and then slid right down against the eardrum. Um, and then the patient gave up and, and then it's kind of reformed and recaked basically. So again, we're just trying to get this top section here, which is a bit difficult. And it's primarily difficult just because it's in an awkward position. So again, I'm right-handed. So whenever I am doing suction, I'm, I'm, the, I'm having to creep the suction probe into the ear with my right hand. And therefore anything on the kind of right-hand side of the canal is always a bit difficult to get for me. Um, and I'm not ambidextrous and you can't, well, it's highly unadvisable to switch hands because the left hand is my non-dominant hand. So I won't have nearly as much control over the suction probe and I would end up probably, you know, applying too much pressure or, you know, just faffing around for a while um, and not making much progress. So I always use my dominant hand. And you can see we're getting a little bit shaky here. Patients are getting a little bit jittery. So, I mean, a little bit of movement and, um, and so here we go. So another round of irrigation just because the patient was starting to um, get a little bit jittery there. And as you can see, I'm pulling that trigger and that's making the water go. So I will show you how this um, irrigator works at the end. So, I mean, it looks, it almost looks like a bit of a novelty. It is basically just a squirty bottle, but, um, you know, highly effective. So you may be wondering at this point why I don't showcase this equipment more often or why it's never usually seen um, across audiology channels, earwax removal channels. And that's primarily because suction is better and quicker and safer. Um, it just so happens that in this, this is one of the rare cases where for safety reasons, I would have to defer to another method. It's not necessarily with a manual irrigator like this, which is very low pressure. You know, the chances of perforating the eardrum are you know, virtually impossible with such a low pressure solution. But the kind of worry, I suppose, is that you, the patient is at a slightly higher risk of developing an ear infection purely on the basis that you're putting water into the ear and soggy dead skin is, is a wonderful food source for microorganisms. So there's a slightly higher chance of a titus externa. But, you know, at the same time, my, my thinking behind this is that, I mean, if you imagine all the people around the world, how many of those people get water in their ears on a daily basis when they shower or bathe or swim? You know, a huge amount of people get water in their ears all the time. So if water was really that bad for an ear, and I'm not saying it's, it's a wonderful solution, irrigation, but if water was really that bad, then we'd see people, you know, presenting to doctor surgeries all the time with ear infections. It, you know, ear infections would be a lot more prevalent than they are. So, um, you know, although it's, it's slightly riskier, um, I'm fairly comfortable using it as long as the, the pressure is low. So there we go. Ear, the eardrum is looking significantly cleaner now. And again, this kind of sticky wax that's kind of hiding in the recess there. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't get that. And again, we have to be very mindful that we, we, for safety reasons, we can't linger down in the ear canal for too long. You know, at, at this point, I'm a, a tad nervous about um, actually getting grabbing stuff off the eardrum just because it's it's a little bit riskier. Um, so again, I'm, I'm using the brace position, which means that as I'm holding the suction probe, I'm actually resting it like this on the patient's face. So my pinky and the rest of my hand is always on the patient's face, such that if he moves towards me, then the suction probe will actually move with the patient's head. So it's not like my hand is kind of hovering there. Um, so that's called the brace position. It's the safest way of performing microsuction. But there's the before shot, an absolute quagmire in there, uh, with only the central part of the drum visible. So, and there's the after shot, significantly better. And I would not have been able to achieve that without irrigation. So there's the equipment. You've got the sort of kidney bowl there, if you can call it that, the, the blue cup. And then as I pull the trigger, just watch what comes out of the end. You can see it's coming out in sort of a tripod motion. And if, if I really wanted to, I could really put a lot of force into the trigger and that would cause a lot of pressure, but I tend to go fairly, fairly easy with it. So there we go. So there we go. I hope you found this video enjoyable, slightly different today, but um, I know that a lot of you have been asking um, to see the sort of different tools and techniques that we use in clinic. And there are a lot, um, a lot of different tools and gadgets that we have here for, for pretty much all eventualities. Um, so, and I thought that this was a nice one to showcase because we see microsuction all the time. Um, but irrigation is still very, very common, not just in the UK, but in the States as well and in Europe. And it is a valid method of removing earwax. Not as good as microsuction, not as safe as microsuction, but still perfectly valid. 
Um, so there we go. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below and I will try my very best to get back to you. Thank you for watching, liking and subscribing and I will see you on the next one.